solve for a 14-year problem. I've got some examples here. The governor mentioned Hillsboro. Um, Portland is maybe the, the largest number, where in 21-23, PERS costs will jump 39 million over just the normal 29%, and 48.7 million after that. Eugene will jump between 12 and 15 million. Bend between 11 and 14 million. This is all derived from, there's a, a nifty tool on PERS's website called the PERS Employer Rate Projection Tool that anybody uh, can download and look at if you're curious. St. Helens, uh, Senator Johnson, two to two and a half million increase. So if our goal is to stabilize rates at the red line, that will require, as the governor mentioned, around $2.5 billion at current assumptions. We also modeled if assume, the assumed earnings rate of the PERS fund drops to seven, it would require $3 billion. So we're solving for that range, two and a half to three billion. The most important context in terms of how we developed our shared responsibility framework is what the governor talked about in terms of the percentages of accrued liability, 72% of the accrued liability is due to retirees and inactives. And you can see the uh, percentages for the other, for current employees. So when we thought about, we really thought about this framework, we really broke the unfunded liability into those three chunks. And the vast majority of it, 72%, is what we're proposing, ha having the state take on a major commitment to cover. I'll go into some detail on that. You can then see for the current the UAL, the, unfund, the accrued liability associated with current employees, that's what we're asking current employees to uh, help, um, help address. Okay, so in terms of the state's commitment, um, the model here is as follows. We would create what we're calling a school PERS offset account. It's not a side account, it's a new type of fund for K-12 districts and a separate one for higher ed for universities and community colleges. Most of the detail we have here is on the K-12 account, uh, so, but it would be similar with different funding sources for higher ed. We would seed the offset account with $800 million in one-time funds and dedicate roughly a billion and a half in future state receipts over the next 15 years. And here's where we propose that money could come from. In terms of seeding, the account with $800 million, as the governor mentioned, the kicker and SAFE, and there's multiple options with SAFE, um, are the two biggest options. The governor also appropriated $100 million in her budget of general fund. Uh, we already actually all have $83 million in repatriation funds from a bill from last session. There's a lot of other things you could do. Um, and the, reason, the really important reason we need that is to offset the dedicated revenues, um, which are pretty volatile and unpredictable. The first one we also already have secured in a previous bill, Senate Bill 1566, which dedicates interest from unclaimed property and excess debt collection. That's projected to be about 332 million over 15 years. But the big new one is what we're calling windfall or above trend capital gains and estate taxes. I think many of you know the most volatile revenue streams that the state has are state and capital gains. They just go like this, they're very unpredictable. So the proposal here is you would take capital gains and estate taxes, instead of going into the general fund, they would go into a new account. The state economist has developed a formula for capturing the above trend amounts, so the mountain tops, and that amount would go into this offset account the rest would be at the legislature's disposal. The median estimate is $1.3 billion over 15 years. Um, these above trend amounts would not be at the legislature's disposal, which they are now. They also would be outside the kicker calculation. There's a four or five page um, analysis the state economist has done. It'll be in your binder. It just shows that uh, with a high level of certainty, these funds will be there, but they're very unpredictable. So if we don't see the account with enough money up front, we can't balance this unpredictable but known revenue source, and that's really the challenge.